We're really trying to gather all the information that we can to develop as complete a picture about who is affected by which diseases and how are those diseases affecting their livelihoods. I'm Michael Brower and I'm a principal research scientist at the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation and I work on the Global Burden of Disease project. So the Global Burden of Disease study is a systematic effort to quantify the health loss in terms of deaths as well as disability for everyone in the world. So quantifying by location, by age, by sex, over time, what diseases are affecting the populations of the, of the world. In our quantification of the global burden of disease, we're really trying to gather all the information that we can about um, who is affected by which diseases and how are those diseases affecting their, their livelihoods. So this could mean information uh, from vital statistics, if countries have that information, uh, who's being born, who's dying, and, and from what causes. We may use surveys or even very detailed clinical information from, from healthcare providers, and we really try and put all that information together uh, to get a picture. So much of the work that I'm involved with is really trying to understand risk factors for those diseases. So what amount of diarrheal disease is coming from access to poor, poor access to drinking water? And to do that, we need to really understand three things. That's how many people are exposed to that risk factor. So that could mean a level of air pollution, it could mean warmer temperatures, it could mean how many people are smoking. We need to also understand the information on what is the relationship between those risk factors and a particular disease, and then the level of disease that is, is affected, uh, affecting that population. So that second piece, what is the relationship, we really get that from the scientific literature. We're trying to assimilate all of that information from all the different studies that are done by researchers around the world to understand what is the relationship between a particular exposure and a particular disease. And then moving backwards to sort of get that level of exposure, we use all kinds of different data sources. So for example, for air pollution, we're using a lot of satellite information. For water quality or access to sanitation, we're using detailed survey uh, information. And for something like lead exposure, we're getting information on measurements of blood lead from different populations around the world that may be collected by national governments as part of surveys, by NGOs as part of their work, um, or by researchers to try and understand what the level of exposure is in a population. In the global burden of disease, we separate causes. So those are actually what is affecting people. So we think about a stroke, heart attack, uh, respiratory disease. Those are causes. And the risk factors are the things that we do that may um, affect those causes. So development of a disease. So it could be a behavioral risk factor, meaning something that individuals can choose to do in terms of what are they eating in their diet, whether they're smoking, whether they're drinking alcohol, or it could be environmental, which is what I focus on. So that would be what is the level of air pollution in their community? What is their access to clean drinking water? What is their access to sanitation? What is the temperature in the locations uh, where they live? And then it's again, linking those bits of information together based on our understanding of the relationship between that risk factor and a particular disease. To assess the impact of environmental risk factors, we look for what kind of information is available globally because we're doing this uh, in a global context. For air pollution, while we may have ground level measurements available um, in many communities, especially in high income countries, there's many parts of the world where that information is not available. So we use satellite information to fill in the blanks. So it really depends somewhat on the particular risk factors. Some risk factors, environmental factors, we have environmental measurements, temperature, air pollution being an example. In some cases, we're really trying to understand 
what's in the individual's body, and that would be an example like, like lead exposure. When we are estimating the impact of environmental risk factors on health, we're doing it in a global context, and we need to do that in a way that we can compare one country to another country, and also to compare one risk factor, something like air pollution, to smoking. So we try and do it with a consistent methodology. When a country does uh, an estimation, they're often doing it for a very specific risk factor. So they may be estimating the impact of lead on their population without considering how that will necessarily compare to the impact of another risk factor, such as smoking or a diet high in red meat consumption. So that's one reason things will be different. Also, countries may only use their own data. Often we're trying to use data from around the world. And if a country maybe has incomplete data, we'll borrow information from similar countries that may be uh, nearby or countries at a similar level of socioeconomic uh, development to try and understand things. So those are just some examples of why our information may differ from a national level estimate that a country may prepare. Our goal is to release these estimates on an annual basis and we try and do this so that our estimates are timely and informative for policymakers and governments around the world. What we do is to provide this information so that countries, NGOs can compare trends over time. They can compare the conditions to similar types of countries and also to compare the impact of a particular risk factor to another risk factor to prioritize, for example, spending on smoking or diet or physical activity or environmental risk, we will provide that information so that a country can, can see what is the impact of one risk factor relative to another and, and hopefully use that to prioritize policies. And increasingly, we are also doing forecasts for the future. So we'll try and estimate what we think the future health and the future impact of specific risk factors is likely to be um, for different countries over time into the future so that they can actually have a, an eye into what their challenges may be in, in the coming years. A big challenge that we face in the global burden of disease is quite often the locations where we expect the impact of an environmental risk factor to be largest are exactly those locations where we have very limited data, especially low income countries. So we may have no information on the blood lead levels of a population in a place where we expect perhaps that there's lots of lead acid battery recycling and exposure to lead may be high. So how do we deal with that situation? Well, we will try and borrow information from other locations. We will try and model the relationship between that exposure um, and other factors that where we do have information about that country and try and then to reference it against sort of a gold standard. So it's really a lot of putting together different sources of information to try and come up with a complete picture so that we can provide information even in locations where um, there's no direct data. One of our principles in the GBD is really having information is better than saying um, we don't know anything about this location. And when we do that, we also provide an estimate of uncertainty. So in locations where there's a lot of data, we're much more certain about the level of exposure or, or the level of disease burden. And in locations where we have to do a lot of modeling, we're more um, uncertain about those levels. And that actually is motivation for different groups to do more of that direct data collection that could help fill in those gaps. 
In terms of the, the impacts of environmental risk factors on the health of children, we know that water quality and access to improved sanitation are very important in the development of diarrheal disease. Air pollution affects children in the development of lower respiratory disease. And we're also starting to look at different impacts of climate change. So that could be extreme weather, flooding, temperature, and how that affects impacts on children, including things like diarrheal disease and, and respiratory disease, as well as malnutrition through food insecurity, impacts of extreme weather on ability to grow crops locally to provide for nutrition of, of growing children.